Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick look at this new plane. Well, new to me, this is the Mars aeroplane. Now, I am always on the lookout for new and interesting wings and planes to try. Now, I ordered this one from Banggood at the beginning of April, so it took over two months to get here. Sadly, the box was a little bit squished, but we'll get on to the unboxing. I'll show you how it comes in a minute. Luckily, it was very well packed, so there was only very minor damage despite the fact that the whole box had got pretty crushed. Now, I really like the kind of wings and planes that are designed for FPV. I like models that have space for FPV and flight controller gear, ideally an optional space for an action camera, enough cooling for things like HD FPV, enough static thrust and enough lift for easy hand launches. I like a good compromise airframe that can be set up for either endurance or speed. I like it to be quite stable when it's flying. I like big roomy battery bays so that I can put batteries in that will give me a decent amount of flight time. And ideally, I like removable wings for storage and transport. And this seems to tick all of those boxes. Now, my current favourite model right now, for those of you that watched the video a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that out of my top four favourite wings and planes that I fly that kind of fit into those categories, the best one by far, and my favourite is the Asimar Sea Dolphin. This is a 1.2 meter wingspan plane, however, and is significantly bigger than the Dolphin. And from the building I've been doing here, I think it's going to be significantly heavier as well. So it's probably going to be better in slightly windier conditions, and hopefully the bigger size of the plane will make it easier to fly too. So while I unbox it, let me go through the specs. So this is made from EPP. Uh, the wings are removable, which is a big tick. There is a place for the battery at the front, FPV gear, flight controller, and a GPS. I'll show you all those on the bench in a moment. It comes with a 10 by five inch prop and a lower KV motor, which seems to be designed for a 4S battery that should make it reasonably efficient has a V-shaped tail. I like V-tails. I think they look really cool and they work really nicely. And again, that's something that's on my Atom RC Dolphin that I really love. And the way that the wings connect into the body is quite cute. It just connects in via kind of a tab at the front, a foam tab. The carbon tube itself, which is quite big, I think it's about 12 millimeter diameter carbon tube. And then we have a single screw at the back to stop it popping off. As you can see, the fact that it took almost two months shipping for this uh, was a little bit sad. It was obviously on the very slow boat from China, and I think it was at the bottom of the pile too. My heart always sinks when a box arrives and it has been squashed. However, the only damage from the whole thing was the forward battery bay canopy. It was deformed and squashed a little bit. Now, I forced it back into place and secured it with Velcro battery straps, and it has gone back into shape pretty much. In terms of specifications, again this is EPP, it's available as a kit and PMP, I've got the PMP version here. Uh, wingspan is 1.2 meters, length is 81.6 centimeters, the kit weight is 562 grams and it's designed for hand launching with a maximum takeoff weight of 1.8 kilograms. I think I'm going to be about 300 grams short of that. Power system that has been provided, let's talk a little bit about that with the electronics. It comes with a 2814 1100 kV brushless motor and that is paired with a 50 amp ESC that has a 3 amp BEC in it. I'm not going to be using that at price price, this is probably going to be built with iNav. has a 10 by 5 inch prop and it comes with four Metal Gear servos. Uh, they appear to be digital and unfortunately they're completely unbranded. It would have been nice for this kind of money because it is quite expensive to have some nicer branded servos, a high tech or Emacs or something. In addition to the parts that come in the box, if you get the PMP, you're going to need a battery. So you're going to need a pretty heavy 4S. I'll show you the one that I think I'm going to use in a moment. And you're obviously going to need a radio system, but I'm going to pop iNav in this as well. So here at the front of the Mars is the main battery bay. If I take the top off, this is a really, really big battery area with lots and lots of room for very, very heavy batteries. Now I'm going to need a heavy battery in this because I'm going to have to fly it with something 
like this thing here. This is a 4,000 milliamp hour 4S battery. I need this in the nose just to get it to balance. Without any of the other electronics in this, with it made up like this, it's going to weigh about 1.3 kilograms. So this is going to be a heavy model. By the time I put flight controllers and everything else in it, I'm going to be knocking on the door of 1.5 kilograms. Now the nose itself comes off. Uh, it's actually held in place by a couple of magnets. There's a couple of adapters that go in the nose for different camera types, which is a nice idea. And then we can actually push the nose off and it's held in place by a couple of magnets and a couple of pushes. And then on this uh, nose, we have a piece to remove for a regular camera. Hopefully you can see that on the top. I also have a separate nose, which you can make up and put together. That's a cute idea. Uh, there's everything in the box to go through with it. That one though at the front has a space for a camera rather than this being a pointed nose. Uh, there is room at the front for an action camera if you needed one. That might help with the uh, central gravity a little bit. Now this was the piece that was damaged on mine. It now fits okay. It's got some uh, scores on it but it does kind of fit back in place reasonably well in terms of the middle of the body the middle has the main section which is where your flight controller would go a um, couple of things in here this is the carbon rod goes through this meaty bit at the front which is for the wings and then we have the screws that hold the wings on at the back now the screws that came with it were a little bit too short i ended up actually making uh, these little thumb screws, I 3D printed the tops um, and use slightly longer screws and they seem to work a little bit better. They allow you to kind of bite into the wing and to hold it securely in place. But again, tons of room in here. You can get a full-size Pixhawk if you wanted to without any problem at all. It's also very tall. Then there's a spot for the GPS behind it, the ESC. Uh, this is the only thing that has air cooling in it. There's a vent at the front and an exhaust at the back. And then you have the motor mount at the rear. Uh, the motor mount itself was a little bit tricky to put on. Uh, the holes didn't quite line up with the actual piece underneath the motor. So it needed a little bit of finoodling. Underneath the body, uh, it, worth a quick look, we have kind of landing skids at the front. We have the landing skids in the middle, which also act as the place to hold it, to throw it. And then we have these extra little pieces here that go, that are connected to the bottom. The actual body itself is held to the V-tails via these screws that go through some pieces in the body. So that's the body itself, uh, quite nicely laid out, uh, quite a big beastie actually. And um, hopefully, be able to get all the electronics in here without any problem. Next thing to look at in is the wing. So the wing itself is looked quite small, but actually isn't as bad as it looks once it's on the model because the middle of the body seems like a lifting body on its own. So we have uh, room for some kind of connector at the end. That's the hole for the carbon fiber. That's where the little retaining screw goes into. You can see this is the notch at the front that holds the wing into place. So between those three pieces, it's pretty secure. I do wish they'd have put some kind of connector in here. People like ZOHD do it on much cheaper models than this. Then we have a, a cover that goes over here. So if you did have a connector, all of the wiring could be made off and kind of sealed up nicely out the way. We have the wire track going to the servo out onto the control surface. There is additional uh, pieces here, tracks that go through to an external bay at the very end. There's nothing on the top. You'd have to cut your holes for your long range FPV or you know your long range radio systems or whatever, but it's there, little protector at the front to protect the servo horn. And that's about it for the wing. So there are a couple of things with this PMP kit that I have felt weren't quite up to the quality that I was expecting for this kind of money. The first is that the daft little things like the retaining bolts for the wings weren't quite long enough, that they're not designed to be thumb screws to make the wings easy to remove in the field. Things like the electronics aren't 
middle draw, never mind top draw, they seem to be pretty generic things. And for, when you're paying for this kind of money, I would want some kind of branded known product. I think if I ordered another one of these, I would probably get the kit and get my own electronics in with something like high tech or Emac servos, uh, a decent ESC and a nice T-motor motor for the back. The fit and finish on the foam could be better. There's quite a lot of gaps in places. Some of them, particularly with the front hatch on mine because it got so squished, are kind of worse than they probably are. But looking at the other hatches, there are gaps that you don't find in other plane manufacturers, people even like Atom RC and definitely people like ZOHD. There isn't enough thought about cooling on it, and I'm going to have to think about that. There is a little bit of cooling at the back, as we've already seen, for the ESC, uh, but it would be great if they'd have thought about cooling for video transmitter systems and things like that as well. The HD system, if you use one from DJI, is going to have to be right up there in the nose. It can definitely take that weight with such a big, heavy motor at the back, but it's a case of then, how do you keep all that stuff cool? You're going to have to definitely fit some auxiliary cooling. No protection for the landing skids or the prop. There isn't any kind of moulded plastic pieces to go over the bulges at the bottom, which are the ones that are going to get damaged. And the prop isn't a folder, it's a fixed prop, and it extends quite a way down below the body. So when you're landing on grass, there's a very good chance you're going to catch the prop. I'm almost certainly going to order a 10x5 folding prop to replace that at the back to give me a chance of not ripping the motor mount every time that I bring it into land. Couple of big oversights for me. There aren't any connectors in the wing roots. It's obviously designed for some. There are some cutouts in the balsa, both in the plane itself, in the body, and also in the root of the wing. I wish they'd have put some in there. That would have made such good sense. An eight pin connector or something. I have some here that I may fit later on. But for now, with only having the servos in, I'm quite happy just to unplug and plug the servo cables together when I take it apart for transport or storage. But that would have been such a nice addition to have on the plane and at this kind of money I would have expected those kind of extra cute touches. Foam hinges as well and no CA hinges or anything else in the box. Might be worthwhile maybe reinforcing them with blender and tape before you take them out to fly. They do feel nice and thin, they're quite flexible straight out the box so do be careful of that. And the last comment I'll make is the manual, and I'm using air quotes for this, is absolutely terrible. I've done a video already about why manufacturers need to make such an effort to manuals that give us a chance of actually getting these things in the air without destroying not only hundreds of pounds worth of foam but maybe a week's worth of work and this one is probably one of the worst I've ever seen. It talks about throws being 60%. 60% of what? So the guys behind this plane, if you're watching this please, please, please write a better manual. Give us things like if there's any offsets or reflex needed. Talk about the actual throws for all the control surfaces in millimeters. Show me a little diagram. So I'm going to have to figure that stuff out. If you are already owning a Mars and you have it flying and you've got that stuff figured out already, I'd love to know. So in summary, this is an interesting plane, but the quality of it altogether is not quite the level that I really wanted for this kind of money. The uh, boxing experience for me was slightly marred by the fact that the box had been squashed so much, but the actual plane itself, there's lots of little niggly bits that with a bit of thought and effort could have made it something that's really, really fantastic straight out the box. Things like the cheap electronic components are very disappointing. I would have hoped for something that was a little bit better for this kind of cash. But I was planning a new iNav series to update the iNav for Beginners 2020 series. iNav 5.0 is really needed, an updated video series on that. And this seems the plane to do it. So you're going to see this plane an awful lot more. I'm going to put iNav 5.0 on it. We'll go through the full setup. I'll essentially do an iNav for Beginners 2022 series using iNav 5 and showing all the steps, radio setup, the whole thing. And that will be a fun way to build it out and test it. And then once I've flown it enough, I can actually do a full review. But hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have seen this plane. It is about 40% more expensive last time I looked than my beloved Atom RC Dolphin. The big question is, does that mean it's 40% better? We'll find out. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.